This is Kevin Murphy at Go Power Sports. Today we're going to be assembling the Hurricane 200X. To start with, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the frame. We're going to come down here with the 14 millimeter nut and bolt on both sides. We also have here that it's strapped down to the frame itself that needs to be removed. We also have on the other corners, each corner has your 14 millimeter nut and bolt. 14 millimeter nut and bolt. Here we have a support that's taken them both together. You need to remove both of those. Again, here are your support here on the frame that needs to be removed. And then the last one there, and we'll get those unbolted and removed so we can get to the bike. All right, we're gonna start unbolting it and uncrating it. We're gonna start with these bolts here, 14 millimeter. On the bike itself, the shock bolts are also 14 millimeter, both sides. Save your bolts, put them back where you found them, so you lift it up to insert the shock. Same as your support on this side. All right, now that we have all these bolts out of here, we're gonna go ahead and lift the cage out and away. Now we can get to the bike. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to put our suspension back in there, which means we need to lift the back end up, pull this bolt out, and then slide it into our shock to hold it in position. Do not bolt it down yet until you get the other side in place. Then you can bolt your suspension down. All right, your shock suspension is now in there nice and tight. We're ready to remove the front forks. We're going to pick it up and put it on our stand so we can work on it. So we have our main bolt here. It bolts all the way through the frame to support this as it ships. We're gonna be removing the tires and the handlebars that are also strapped on the side. All right, so we're gonna unbolt this. Now this does come in real tight because it's pressed against this tire. You may have to move it around a little bit to get this moving. Sometimes you have to get a rubber mallet to get these out. Once I pull them out like this, it makes it really easy to put your wrench there to hold and continue pulling it out. Once you have this out, now you can pick it up and put it on a stand to work with. We recommend that a second person give you a hand. These do get a little bit heavy. For us at Go Power Sports, this is an easy build. For people that have never built a mini bike is why we are showing this video today. And we're gonna go step by step and we'll try to go fairly slow. Kevin's our assembler and our top technician here at Go Power Sports. We at Go Power Sports have a stand that Kevin has purchased that we build on that you probably won't have. But we're gonna set it on this stand and that's how we'll be building it. All right, we're gonna open up our bag to get our parts and screws out. All your components are right here. You have your fender, 
all the screws, nuts and bolts are gonna be in that fender for everything you need to do. Your risers are in this bag. Your brake bolts are in this bag and your fender bolts are in this bag. Your fender is going to come and your tire will be flat. You will have to air up your tire. You're going to need to pull the valve cap off. You will need to tighten up your valve stem and air your tire up to 12 pounds. Okay, so you're going to take your cap off you're going to tighten up your valve stem. Usually they loosen that so it can get flat when they tie it down to the frame. Once you get it tied down, you're gonna put in 12 pounds of air. Looking at about 12 pounds of air is what you're going to need in this. Put your cap back on. And then we're going to go to it, drilling out where the brakes go for the brake caliper to fit properly. Okay, here. These holes are too small. We're going to have to cut the drill these open. The holes are for your brake caliper, which is right here. I've got to cut all this loose, so give me one second. All right, we got our handlebars that are strapped to the frame that we got to cut loose. We have our master cylinder here that we have to also cut loose. Once you cut the handlebars loose, you can go ahead and pull them up a little bit to the top, out of the way. And then we can cut our brake assembly loose. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna check the fit of our brake caliper onto our shock assembly. We got the bags of bolts that comes out in this unit. We have your head risers. We have the brake bolts. We have two locking washers that go to the brake bolts and two regular washers that goes to the brake bolts. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a lock washer, a regular washer, and then we're gonna put it on there and do the second bolt to make sure that everything is snug and fit. That one fits just fine. We'll get the next one put together. Okay, so the next bolt is lock washer, regular washer, and then we'll attempt to put this in. All right, so it's not fitting. So what we're gonna end up having to do, take your bolts back out, and we're gonna drill out these holes to the next size up. 3 8 drill bit is what we're using. Once we get this a little bit bigger, it will give us a little bit more to go ahead and thread these in, thread these in to the holes that are here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a 3 8 bit we're going to go ahead and drill through here. I'm gonna take some WD-40 and put it on my bit because aluminum is gummy when you start drilling into it and you don't wanna catch onto it. Fast speed, light tension. Next hole. Now we're gonna to check to see that our bolts are fitting. Get rid of all the aluminum. And then you can set it back up. Top one in. All right, they are working just fine now that we drilled the holes properly. Now it's gonna attach here. I'm gonna go ahead and take it back off so I can assemble the front wheel on there and then we'll put the brakes back on. Okay, so in that bag of nuts and bolts, you got 10 millimeter, three bolts, three nuts, that's gonna go into the fender. 
So on the fender side, we got a little tag here that needs to be removed. And sometimes you'll notice that this bracket is a little straight when your fender is curved. So you're gonna to have to bend this bracket down to get to that curve. It doesn't take much. Just take your hand and bend it down a little bit and then you can match up your fender to see if you're properly fit. As you can see, it needs a little bit more bending going on. So we're gonna bend it a little bit more. And as you can see now, it's fitting properly in front and back. Now we can add our bolts, which I add on top. I hold them down, put this underneath, and then I can hold my fender up and add the bolts. Add the nuts to the bolts. These are 10 millimeter nut and bolts. So you just need a 10 millimeter ratchet, 10 millimeter socket. Snug them down. You tighten them up too tight, this fiberglass fender will crack. All right. On occasions, some of these are bent one way or another. Make sure that these do not touch here or here. If so, you will need to adjust here on the bracket. You can grab them and bend them accordingly one way or another if they are offline. Okay, now we're going to add the front tire on that now that we've already done the fender and then we're going to add the brake back on and then we're going to go on to the handlebars. Make sure your brake is on this side. You're going to make sure that your pegs are in the back of the tire and we're going to put it together. We're going to impact this down using a crescent wrench and an impact. What I like to do is I like to spin it before I tie it down. That way I know I didn't bind up the bearings. Still spinning freely. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and install our brake assembly back. Going back to the same bolt, lock washer washer and that's on both of them that's going in you're going to make sure you have your gap here and this pad is sitting in properly if this pad is not sitting in properly in this bracket this will bind up when you bolt it down you'll have to remove it again to make sure that pad is in there properly you do it okay. Going to snug in the top so you can get the bottom in, and you got to adjust to get to get the bottom in. Straighten up your cable. You want your slack up here where your shock is at, not down here. Now we're going to go ahead and start putting the handlebar to the handlebar risers. Remove your plastic off your handlebars. You have grooves here that needs to go into your riser when you bolt them down. All right, when you put your handlebars on, you wanna make sure your brake calibers are flush so they work properly. Hold them into place and tighten them down. Tighten them down evenly so they don't bind up on you. Handlebars are now on. We're going to start checking brakes 
my brakes attached to it. I spin the wheel to make sure it's not bound up and I may have to pump this up to get that caliper to fully fit because I pushed the caliper in to install it. Now our brakes are working now that I pumped it up. Now that we've checked the front brakes, we're gonna check the back brakes, make sure they're working good. Our pump up to make sure it's nice and pumped. Now I can run it and it's braking properly. All right, brakes seem to be working. Next, we're going to check the chain. We're gonna come down here and make sure we can move this chain. We got movement on the chain. It will be tight. Once you run this about 20 to 30 minutes, we're gonna loosen it up. It's gonna stretch out properly. Then we're gonna to have to check the tension afterwards. You check the tension by first loosening the main bolt. Then we're gonna come over here to the locking bolt, loosening it up, and then we can tighten it up. Any turns on this one must be done identically to the other side, this one, to ensure that your tire is straight in the system. I've seen of these few chain guards vibrate back here. And what it's vibrating on is the adjustment bolt. You can take this and bend it out of the way to get it away from that bolt to stop the vibration. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make sure our throttle assembly is all tight so it don't become loose and come off track. So we're gonna make sure that your lockdown nut is locked down up top. Then we have another lockdown nut right here for adjustments. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that locks down also so we know nothing's gonna move on us. Now that we've tightened up all of our nuts and bolts on this throttle control, we're gonna go ahead and make sure it's working properly, full throttle, and then it come back. Here's your throttle assembly right here, and as you can see, I'm releasing it and it's coming right back to where it needs to be. Now we're going to go ahead and oil it up and fuel it up and take a test ride. First, we're going to come down here, remove our oil cap, fill the oil up to the bottom of the threads. Here we are using Pennzoil 10W30. You need a name brand type of oil, whether it be Motorcraft, Havoline, Castrol, Pennzoil. Got a long funnel, nice clean rags to keep down there so I'm not making a mess everywhere. We're going to start off with about 12 ounces of oil, just in case there's some left in the bottom of the case from the manufacturer's test run. Okay, now that we filled the oil up to the bottom of the threads, we're going to go ahead and put our dipstick back in there and snug her up. All right, your fuel that we're going to add here. So we're going to fuel it up now. And as you can see inside the fuel, there is a stop level. If you go past that level, your ventilation, come down here, your ventilation is going to start clogging up with fuel and then your carburetor is not going to run right. We're going to take this outside and we're going to fuel it up and take it for a test run. See you outside. Here at Go Power Sports, we use non-ethanol fuel in every one of our vehicles so the carburetor does not gum up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start her up. We need to be the thin, not the thick. The thin turns it on. The big fat button is for off so it's easy to shut it off. Hit the thin on button. We're gonna come down here to the carburetor. The carburetor is turned off. We need to turn the carburetor on. Your choke is off. We need to turn the choke on for us to start this. Once you get through warming it up, getting a little bit of fuel to it, after it warms up, you can slowly start removing the choke. And then once it fully warms up, you can go ahead and shut the choke off. Time for a run. All right, now 
now that everything seems to be running just fine, we're gonna go ahead and shut her down. Now that we have everything up and running, this is the same as the MB200. Nothing different other than MB200 does not have the front brake assembly on it. So now that we've assembled all this, it's the same thing. You have a good one.